And we are live. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. This is Patrick Lee, your host of Midweek Motivation Live. We're going to be talking about some new ways to help you in every area of your life, give you a little motivation today, give people just a second to tune in here to the live broadcast. Good show today. It's going to be fun. You know the drill. We're going to be back right after this, talking to you today about uh, ways to be more impactful in the lives of others around you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And we're back. I hope you're all doing great today. It's a beautiful day here in downtown uh, Tower Studio Number One, Amarillo, Texas. Loving life today. It's a little, little uh, overcast, a little chilly, but the sun's out. It's about 55 degrees. Doing well. It's going to be a nice mild day. Nice little breeze. Turning into fall. Not really fall. It kind of had a little bit of fall, but it's good. People already tuning into the show. Thank you. Hey, let's go. Pastor Frank, how are you today? Great to see you on here today on Midweek Motivation Live, now on all major podcast platforms. Wherever you go to listen to your podcast, you can find Midweek Motivation Live with Patrick Lee. Search it by that name and you can find us there. I've got people texting me and it's showing up on my screen. I love this technology that's combined, how we're all linked together. Isn't that amazing? I love that. Um, that's okay. Um, stop texting me and just watch the show. You'll get something out of it. I promise you it'll be awesome. <laughs> I love that. One of my best friends <laughs> messaging me. So, hey, we. I want to talk to you today about kindness, about how to be more impactful with other people around you. Um, I think it's going to help you. It's going to help me. Hey, Pete, good to see you tuning in as well all of the regulars coming in to watch the show. One of the newer viewers of the show shared it on his social media yesterday, made a very nice post about it, how last week's show basically had changed his life. I appreciate that. And he's striving to learn something new every day. And then we'll try to turn around in kind and share what he has learned with those in his circle. And I, I simply messaged him and, and responded back to that. And I said, that is the goal of the show. If you, if, if I learn something as I learn something, I want to share that with others as well. If something in life has impacted me or has helped me, I believe that it can in turn help you. And that's my goal for the show. So it's really very nice of him to share the show. And I tell you at the end of the show every week, like, love, share the show, Click on subscribe if you're on YouTube and hit the bell to get notifications, um, Where, whatever platform that you are on. And be sure to leave me a good referral or a good reference, um, a good review on the show if you can on any of the platforms. It just continues to help us grow. I want to talk to you today about um, a, an article in Success Magazine that I've recently read um, in the latest issue that just came out. I don't know if any of you subscribe to Success Magazine. Our company uh, that I work with, EXP, recently bought this about a year or two ago, and it's been very transformative in my life. The magazine itself, the uh, publication has become transformative. The quality of content that is that has uh, been added into that. The team of, of writers and people that put that together have been in um, grown. They've added to and are incredibly bringing us great content. This particular issue um, has Tamron Hall on the cover, how purpose-driven leadership is taking daytime television to new heights. New heights. Many people know who Tamron Hall is, a dynamic lady. Uh, but this particular article had struck a vein with me, and it's really in my um, it's in my space, if you know what I'm talking about. When we start talking about personal development space, um, kind of the gist of the thrust, the motivation behind this show, Midweek Motivation Live, um, this just really struck a chord with me. And as I've been reading through it, 
Um, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do here on the show. And uh, we we have themes, underlying themes here on the show. And you guys know that we do. And this is one of them. I think that all of these particular topics are going to fit right in with uh, with the theme of the show. And I hope it's going to motivate you like it did me. And it's also going to reassure some of you. Um, last week, we were talking about grace in the previous show, grace for others and specifically grace for yourself. And that's one of the things that many of us um, lack is grace for ourselves. But one of the, the things that I have been told throughout my life, especially the last 10 or 15 years, that whether I was successful or not, whether everyone loved me or not, most people that knew me would just they they wouldn't define me as that rich guy or that celebrity guy or he's the most handsome guy. But most people would just say, you know, like him or love him or whatever. Patrick Lee is just kind. And that's probably one of the best compliments in my heart. That would be one. And, you know, my spirit, that would be one of the best compliments you could pay someone is for them to be kind. When I was a kid, I walked up on a couple of teenage boys abusing animals. Probably warped me for life. And I grew up small town, Oregon coast. I was probably 10 and these boys were probably 14 and just abusing animals. And it just, you know, you, in your head, you just don't, you don't think thoughts like that, right? We're just not taught to be that way. But unfortunately there are those that were, and what's that hasn't been, you know, the motivation for my life changed, trust me. But it was one of the things that you remember as you get older, you have seen things in your life that affect you that make their imprint on you as a young person, a young boy or a young girl, and they start to um, they start to have an an effect on your worldview, your um, thoughts towards others, and you start learning at a young age that not everyone is nice. Your parents tell you to be nice. They tell you to stop fighting with your brother or your sister, and to start showing kindness. And usually, we start becoming more kind around Christmas. Because we know that that bad boys and bad girls don't get presents, right? And then as we start changing and getting a little older, the generations have changed to the point that now the children expect presents. And if they're not inundated and overwhelmed with the amount, um, the price tag on them or the quality of the gifts that they're given, then they are offended. And they go into this pouting, moping phase or they're 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 angry and they want to start you know, distancing themselves from you. But I've, I've this, as I read this article, I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. And that's another show for another day. It's just true. We have got to get this next generation under control or that lack of control, that attitude um, will continue to affect everyone um, around us. It's tearing families apart, relationships apart on the daily. And that's something that we have to get under control. Our children are created by us to be a blessing to us. And the point when they stop becoming a blessing to us, um, things have to change. So let's talk um, about the people that we're, we're going to going. I've got some some banners here and we're going to read you a couple of things that these people have said about these ways. Last week, one of the final comments I made last week was this banner. Be involved. Stop missing the important things like showing up. And in my previous monologue for the last three minutes, some of you have just gotten messages, life lessons, and sermons out of that. So you can um, you can give me credit for that the first time, and then the next time you share it, it's yours. That was freebies for me. So we're going into this last week. I said, be involved. Stop missing the important things like showing up. So how do you show up? For those around about you so this is a another teaching based on that last comment from last week when you're showing grace to yourself and to others one of the best ways when you have done that is to start showing up in the lives of those around you supporting those how do we do that and that's exactly what this article is talking about Shaquille O'Neal is one of the first people I'm going to talk about. And the article is just called Leading with Kindness. You can probably look it up online. Google Success Magazine, Leading with, Com with, uh, Leading with Kindness. Philanthropy, family, loyalty. Here's how success cover stars show up for the people 
around them and in their lives. Every one of these people that I'm going to, going to talk to you about um, briefly for the next few minutes has been on the cover of Success Magazine and had the main feature article inside because they have an impact on the public, on those in their life, and they were worthy of this, having a complete article on them and how they've achieved those levels of success in their life. And most of these people in these articles, these are the underlying themes, the currents that they share that has made them the success that they have. Hard work, grit, determination, all of that is part of it. But these life lessons that they share inside of this are their driving force. Uh, number one, uh, the, and the title of the show today is, If You Can Be Anything in This World, How About Kind? Right? Our parents told us, you can be president, you can be an astrophysicist, you can be, you can go to the moon, or you can be a cowboy or a fireman or a, or a ballerina, whatever it is that you want to be. You can do that. In America, you have the ability to be anything in this world you can be. So if you can be anything in this world, how about kind? This is that's a Shaquille O'Neal. Other people have quoted that, but that's one of the things that Shaquille related to in his portion of this article. And he just says he doesn't see himself as a celebrity because celebrities are crazy. He says, I'm just a regular person. If that doesn't sound quite possible, very little about the seven foot, one inch, four time NBA championship winning actor, athlete, rapper, and business person seems regular. He makes a pretty compelling case for that. Shaq doesn't have an entourage. He doesn't have a security detail. He still shops at Walmart, he told Success Magazine. And it's his favorite store. I'm just a regular guy who listens to those around me. Just because I made it doesn't mean I'm bigger or better than you. Just because I have more money doesn't mean I'm better than you. I find ways to show kindness to other people. I'm just a regular guy. How many of you know someone that's a millionaire? I know I know a couple of millionaires. In the real estate world, there are multiple people that we come in contact with that are millionaires. And the thing that I have learned are there are two kinds of millionaires. People who earned their money and people who had that money given to them or they got some lucky windfall and the money was thrust upon them. And those types of people vary in two very different ways. The type of person that just fell into the money, it was given to them by mommy or daddy, whatever they inherited this, they, they, something happened and all of a sudden, it could be anyone from winning the lottery. You've, you've heard of people that have won the lottery, millions of dollars, and within months or a short couple of years, they're broke again. Because inside, they were not the person they needed to be to handle that kind of wealth. In the Bible, God says, if you will be faithful in the little things, you can become ruler over much. The person who, on the flip side of that coin, the person that has earned most of that money, all of that money by being wise, by hard work, labor, the sweat of their brow, are very frugal. And the true millionaires are millionaires that you would not know generally are millionaires. They don't shop at the fanciest stores. They shop at Walmart. I know millionaires that shop at the, the, the Goodwill, the Salvation Army, the American Council for the Blind Thrift Store. And they go in there and find a good deal on a shirt. Uh, pants, a suit. This jacket I'm wearing today, I bought at Goodwill uh, a couple of years ago, and I love this jacket. It's a really nice blue sport coat, and it was my size. And it's a it's a Bill Blass. And it was very expensive when it was purchased by the original owner, and someone wore it a couple of times, and they donated it to Goodwill. And I happened to be walking, you know, driving by Goodwill one day, and I got this from my dad. And I and I'm I'm attributing this with Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, when I was a kid, I've shared this in the in the past. Uh, my dad loved going to the Salvation Army, the Goodwill, to buy us clothes because we didn't have any money. So I have learned how to be frugal and how to be a better shopper. But there will be times that my dad would come home with something, and he'd bought me some shoes from the Goodwill. And I was furious with my father. I was not kind to him. He was doing what he could to try to feed, house, and clothe five hungry young kids um, and was on a very, very limited budget and was trying to do what he could to save a buck. Um, but he had learned it from his dad um, going through the, uh, the Great Depression. And you just didn't throw anything away. 
So this this is my this is my thrift store find this Bill Blast jacket and I love it. I don't wear it all the time, but I love it when I do. It reminds me, believe it or not, that somewhere in my mind I have the mindset of a millionaire. It doesn't mean I'm a millionaire, but I have the mindset of a millionaire. I'm going to go find something that I and this this jacket may have cost three hundred dollars when it was new. This sport coat may if you just went to to men's warehouse or a nice store and you bought a nice blue sport coat, you'd look to spend two hundred ninety nine, three hundred ninety nine dollars. I've just recently bought a couple. So I know even on sale, there are a couple hundred bucks. And I bought this sport coat for twelve dollars and I'm so proud of it. So if I don't have to wear a three hundred dollar suit, I can wear a twelve dollar suit because I've learned I don't have to pretend to be somebody that I'm not right. I just want to be kind to others. I just want to find a good deal. Yes, but that's one of the things that I liked about what Shaq said. If you can be anything in the world, just be kind. You don't have to go out and act like a celebrity. Be a celebrity in your own mind. Be a good person in your own mind. And then look for ways to impact others around you. Next, Guy Fieri. How many of you guys know Guy Fieri? Uh, the TV, the Food Network star, right? And he had the show about, he had that really sweet convertible. He drove it around all over uh, his, his Camaro and uh, went around to all of these diners, drive-ins and dives, right? Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri looks for opportunities to make an impact. Look for ways to be impactful on others around about him. He says, if we all took a little more time to get to know people around us, I think it would change the whole temperament of this world. Um, in not only does the diners, drive-ins and dives host help give mom and pop restaurants a huge boost through the show, but he also gives back in other ways, whether he feeds thousands in California who've lost their homes during wildfires or raising nearly $25 million for restaurant workers that were affected during the pandemic. I've been given all these opportunities. Why not share it with someone besides myself? If I didn't, I feel like I'd squander it. How many of you feel that way? If something is has been given to you or you've come across wealth or something of great value, do you feel like you need to consume that upon yourself? Or do you find ways to be more impactful? Do you find ways to go out and help those that are less fortunate? It may be in your business. It may be people on your team that work with you. And you haven't gotten close enough to them to know that they're hurting, that they're broke, they're down on their luck. Maybe they haven't sold enough this month and next month it's going to be hard for them to make ends meet. If you have extra, if you have found ways to be blessed, are you consuming it upon yourself or are you looking for ways to have an impact on those around you? Pastor Frank says our availability gives God an opportunity to do good things through us. That's wonderful. I've, I've heard it said, this way, many of you have probably heard it. God isn't looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability and your availability gives God an opportunity to good, to do good things through us. That's a great comment. I love that. Thank you for that. Hey, Pete. Hey, Sal. Other people tuning in, watching the show, um, praying for you, Sal. God's got big plans for you, brother. Um, Sophia Bush, practice small acts of kindness. Sophia says, no cause is too big or too small. Um, her philanthropic work is wide ranging and well documented. She's an actress. Those of you guys that don't know Sophia Bush, she's an actress. Um, she supported causes from women's rights to environmental justice to natural disaster relief. But in 2020, as the pandemic was raging, Bush made headlines for a much smaller act of kindness. She'd spent days making bone broth soup and chicken stew for her neighbors, including their UPS driver, JP. She says it's a small act of kindness within my control in an out of, it's within my control in an out of control world. She wrote in um, an April 2020 Instagram caption, cooking and serving reminded me that we can steer our own ships at any time. So whatever way you might be able to extend yourself to a neighbor, a friend, or an essential worker, I encourage you to go do that. How kind is it of a person that has the ability to go out and do something for someone else would look at 
the the celebrity we always look at these celebrities right and we put them up on a pedestal a pedestal and we make snarky comments about them about how they would rel relate to us little people right the little people let them eat cake marie antoinette said i think right um how kind is it of a person to just look at that and say hey i have the ability to do this to make an impact in someone's life and to show some kindness and these small acts of kindness to your mailman, to the person in the elevator. Um, we have done things like that for our, we had a mail lady for years, was our regular mail lady. And we would leave her a Christmas card, maybe a gift, maybe some cookies in the mailbox. Not all the time, but from time to time. And these little small acts of kindness are ways to help show those around you that may be hurting, that may be needful. It just shows them that there are good people in the world. There's love in the world. There's kindness in the world. Hello, Mary. Great to see you tuning in as well. I love it. Sophia Bush says, practice small acts of kindness. I went out to the mailbox one day a couple of years ago to check the mail and uh, found a card in my, uh, a little envelope and a card in my mailbox. And it didn't have anything on it. It wasn't addressed from the mailman or someone else. It didn't have a stamp. It was just a card. This is a few years ago. And uh, I opened up this envelope, took it into the house, and it had $300 bills in it. I showed it to my wife and I said, hey, someone put $300 in our mailbox. And uh, she broke down crying and no one knew at the time that we were broke that day. I mean, we were broke that week. <laughs> we didn't know how we were going to pay some bills. And, you know, you always have resources because we are resourceful. But we are simply at a, at a period though in those years where we had pretty much tapped out most of our resources and didn't know what we were going to do. But someone knew, someone knew, God told them, hey, you need to go bless these people. And someone blessed us with $300 in our mailbox. And uh, those that little act of kindness was just what we needed to make it through till we had a breakthrough and things started changing in our life. And the, that, that act of kindness is something that will never be forgotten by me or my wife. My, my previous pastor, David, talks about when they were young and uh, freshly married and didn't have much money and his brother came over and knocked on the door and uh, they didn't know what they were going to have for dinner. And his brother knocked on the door and he's like, hey, what are you doing here? And he says, hey, I've got this potato. I have this big giant potato and I was thinking about what I could do with it. And uh, God sort of told me I needed to just come over here and uh, and share this potato with you. That's a story I'll never forget because they cooked up that potato and they ate that potato together and uh, it, and it tided them over until they could could come up with a better plan. You know what I mean? These are the small acts of kindness you can do for something, for someone. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. Chance the Rapper. How many of you guys know who Chance the Rapper is? I didn't really know who he was. And then he became um, one of the coaches on The Voice about a year ago. Chance the Rapper was on there. And I started learning a little more about Chance the Rapper. and. Uh, I'm amused by the guy. I'm impressed by his ability, his knowledge about all kinds of music and business, the people that he knows, the influence that he has in the music community, and uh, was very impressed with y this young guy. And uh, Chance the Rapper says, uh, pay it forward. His secret to success and how he helps those around him is always uh, pay it forward. The Chicago based rapper is giving away his fortune almost as fast as he makes it. How about this? Hey, this is an odd story you don't hear every day, right? Chance the Rapper's 2023 started uh, with a free music festival he organized in Ghana for around 52,000 people. He's working on something similar to take place in Jamaica next year. He also gives back through his youth-focused nonprofit, Social Works, and has famously donated millions of dollars to Chicago public schools. When I believe in something strongly, 
I do my research on it and I try to be as vocal about it as possible, he told Success earlier uh, this year in his article. There are times when you have to insert yourself in the situation to create the change that you want to see. Uh, Chance was in our July, August issue of Success just a couple of months ago. How many of you heard that before? Many of you have posted that as a meme or as a little motivational story on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Be the change you want to see. If you find a place to get involved and you can get involved, I suggest you get involved. Uh, pay it forward. That's one of those things that we have talked about incredibly in the past. Um, it's easy to pay it backwards, right? The person in the coffee line behind you, hey, I want to buy the I want to buy the coffee for whoever's behind me. And uh, if they have a two window system, sometimes that's uh, that's beneficial. At least you have an idea how much it's going to be. But sometimes that person has already ordered and it's 50 bucks and your coffee was five bucks. Right. But they've bought that food and you want to you want to they've ordered it and you want to pay for it. I get that. But that's that's kind of what pay it forward means. If someone has the person ahead of you is paid, uh, paved a way for you. Don't you find it necessary to pave the way for someone else? And that's what this young rapper is doing. He's giving away his time, his energy and his resources to help those that are less fortunate. I think that's a way that all of us um can learn a lesson by doing some of those things. And then finally, I want to talk about this one lady, the next one we're going to talk about. And I mean, we've got a couple, but, but as we wind down here, my wife wears a lot of this lady's jewelry. Many of you watching the show will have heard the name Kendra Scott. And uh, Kendra Scott is a, is a jewelry designer. The earrings and the necklaces that most of the women you know, if you see the little gold necklace with the little um, opal or colored pendant like a choker necklace and then the earrings that look sort of like a chandelier shaped and the little octagon oval shaped earrings. Kendra Scott. Kendra Scott used to be sold exclusively at one shop here in Amarillo. And um, I would see all of these ladies very fashionably wearing these Kendra Scott earrings. And I got to learn the name of who it was as a uh, as a contemporary male. You want to be mindful of the things that other people are mindful of right? And then you start learning to recognize different jewelry patterns and maybe the styles of, of a particular artist or uh, a musician, and you start to recognize them. Well, Kendra Scott is one of those people. And this, um, you could almost say that her jewelry has become iconic on the necks and the ears of most of the women around the world. Kendra Scott, um, she goes by what she calls the sister rule. Many of you women watching the show right now know who I'm talking about. She follows the sister rule. The millionaire behind Kendra Scott wants every last employee to feel like family. How many of you are that way with your with your tribe, right? Your friends, your coworkers, your church, your business. Do you treat all of the people there like family? Now there can be a that can come up and bite you um, every now and then because treating people like family doesn't always mean we treat them like the family that mistreats us. It means we treat them like the family in a good family. OK, let's not blur that boundary. There are people that cross boundaries in our life that are family members that mistreat us. And we treat them to the level of separation from that type of treatment. Right. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about if if you uh, if you are relating with someone and they work with you, do you treat them like that would be your brother? or your sister that you love? How would that affect you? In 2002, Kendra Scott designed her first jewelry collection with just $500 in the spare bedroom of her home. Today, her company is valued over a billion dollars, but the culture is still based on what she calls the sister rule. If your sister did this, what would you do? Every single employee, whether you're an intern, a part-time holiday helper, or, or sea level should have the same level of love and respect and care. Um, how you treat people is what you're going to get back from life. We've talked about that before, the seed time and harvest rule. Um, treat people um, the way you want to be treated, not the way they deserve to be treated, right? So if you love your brother, 
relate to other people the same way. If you love your sister, you get along with your sister. You would expect to treat other people that same way. Have relationship, have communication, look out for each other's back. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Men, it's the bro code, right? You know what I'm talking about. Next, let's talk about Chip and Joanna Gaines. Many people love this couple. We do as well. We used to watch their show a lot and it's come and gone. I think they have a new version of the show on another channel. Most people have bought furniture. Everyone has shiplap in their homes. Um, country, farmhouse, modern, Lux has become normal. Everyone goes down to Waco to go to the silos and go to the Chip and Joanna Gaines store. And uh, we have Chip and Joanna Gaines stuff uh, in our home and many people have it in their offices and their homes. Chip and Joanna Gaines they put family ahead of fame. This is how they have chosen to show kindness. Um, after five seasons on HGTV with their show Fixer Upper, Chip and Joanna Gaines did the unthinkable and stepped away from the show at the height of its popularity. Our oldest, who's 12, is becoming a teenager, Chip said, and Joe and I just realized in our hearts, as much as we love the show, we want to make sure that we're here for our family during important, crucial, pivotal points in their journey. Chip also said that he and Joanna as a couple never wanted to redline. You know, we don't want to run so hard after some dream or some goal only to find out that we've neglected the people that mean the very most to us, which is our marriage and our family. At the very beginning of the show, that's what we said, right? Be involved. Stop missing the important things like showing up, not only for your friends, but for your family. Sometimes you have to slow down a little to renew, to rekindle to that fire in the relationship in your own family. I was talking with a friend um, after a church service just a couple of nights ago about that very thing. And we we all know people that have had a friend, a close friend or a family member, a business associate that has been involved in, around, and part of, of a very successful family, a very successful business, a very successful uh, relationship. And then one of the people in the group, in your friend circle, start struggling. One of the people on your team at your business starts to struggle and, and exhibiting behaviors that are not normal or out of what you would consider normal. And you have to, to, to take a moment and look into that and say, hey, what is going on here? What do we need to do? Sometimes you have to slow down on the pursuit of the fame of the bottom line of the money and you have to focus on the person put family ahead of fame family meaning family meaning family meaning your people your sphere your friend group your bros your girlfriends your teammates you need to you need to take the time to to insert yourself into that if you can if you're welcome to do that and find a way to make sure that that person is as strong and as healthy as they need to be. Um, some of the best team exercises that I've ever been on are, would be those that cause everyone on the team to stop and go help the person that is struggling to keep up. Sometimes it's in a conversation, it's in a debate, sometimes it's in a challenge, uh, but I've been involved in those. And you have to find ways to help everyone on the team get a get ahead. In one of my uh, realtor leadership classes, we went to an event months ago at, uh, at a retreat and we did an exercise where we had these pieces of paper going across the floor and these papers represented um, stepping stones across a pool of lava and the floor is lava and everyone on the team has to be able to get ahead of uh, across the pool of lava and everyone has to help everyone. You have to come up with a plan on how to do it because everyone can't just jump from one stone to the other. Sometimes you have to carry someone. You have to let someone climb ahead of you or over you to get to the next person to help that other person. Everyone on the team has to be able to make it across. And the team that can get across the fastest 
using the most teamwork wins. My team won. It was remarkable. But you had to stop and come up with a plan before you just stepped out. And a lot of people will just step out and say, I'll answer the question or I'll, I'll fix it on the way. But sometimes we, we have said before, right, well begun is half done. If you can come up with a plan originally or at the beginning of how we're going to tackle this, how we're going to succeed and you stick to the plan, you can succeed. But when you find that you have a member that is hurting, that is falling behind or not able to achieve the same level as you, go back and help that person part of your team. And then finally, Mark Cuban, the person a lot of people love to hate. Um, the dude's rich, right? He's one of the sharks on the shark tank, um, owns sports teams, pro sports, and he can be very crass with his words. Um, in the last couple of years, he has learned to be a little bit nicer. He's written some books. Um, he's, he's a pretty famous guy. Influencer, right? Rich dude. Um, Mark Cuban says, I wish somebody would have told me to be nicer. How many of you could raise your hand and say that's something maybe that you're a little guilty of and uh, maybe you've been harsh to those around you as you have been growing a team, growing a business, growing a sphere of influence? Um, in 2020, Cuban made headlines when he picked Delonte West, a former Mavericks player who'd fallen on hard times, picked him up at a gas station and enrolled him in a rehab. <coughs> He wanted him to get ahead. He wanted him to get a new, a fresh start in life. And he invested his time into his former player to go help put him in rehab. These days, Cuban even says one of his greatest regrets is that he wasn't always a kind-hearted person. He's become known as that more lately, but asked on a podcast recently what he wished he knew in his 30s early on as a younger person. And he replied, I wish somebody would have told me to be nicer. And that's a quote. I wish somebody would have told me to be nicer. That's something that I want to leave you with today. If you can be anything in this world, how about kind? I wish somebody would have told me to be nicer. It's very easy for us to be mean, angry, hateful and hurtful to other people. I'm not the best at being kind. I, I pride myself on being kind, but I know that I fall and I need to work on it myself. Um, the world is a harder place than it used to be. Uh, we used to watch episodes of Twilight Zone where the man would fall asleep on a train and he would wake up in the past. How many of you have ever seen those old black and whites? And he would wake up in the past and uh, he would visit there for a short moment and then he would wake up and he'd be back on the train in the future and it was snowing and miserable and everyone was being hateful. And every now and then he would fall asleep on the train again, maybe on the commute home and he would wake up in the past and everything was, was peaceful and everyone was kind and happy. And he would dream about, I wish I could just go to sleep and go back to the past and stay there. How many of you ever thought that maybe you were born in the wrong era? And the world is just so mean, cold, hateful, hurtful, that you wish you could just live somewhere else where everyone was nice. Utopia only exists in your own mind, okay? You can go live off grid, and what good are you? You can go move to the mountains and live a life of peace, and that would be great for you, but how would you help somebody else? If someone walked into your world and found that you lived this great, peaceful life out in the mountains, um, wouldn't they all want to come and live there with you? And then it, within a couple of years, it turns into another city that you didn't want to live in. And then are you going to move away to somewhere else where you can be kind to yourself and just live a peaceful life for yourself? Utopia only lives where you make it. A life of peace and harmony only exists where you make it, where you choose to have it. And you can certainly make the best impact by starting with being kind to those around you. And as you do, you will find, hopefully, that you will start to receive that back. I wish somebody would have told me to be nicer. <laughs> Hope this has helped you today. If you can be anything in the world, how about starting with being kind? Until next week.
This has been Patrick Lee with Midweek Motivation Live saying courage begins at the end of your comfort zone. Let's get out there and get uncomfortable today. Start a new relationship. Help a friend. Be kind to someone else. Ross says, amen. Debbie says, good morning. Mary says, amen. I have been there. Love it. All of the comments. Thank you, everyone. We will see you next time on Midweek Motivation Live. Bye-bye.